I'm Michael Tumacastelotti. I'm uh, Michael's uh, father. I'm Sue, I'm one of the nurses here. It's Dr. Gupta. So no symptoms to report? Nothing to report. Not that I've noticed. No. Hi Michael, how are you doing? Good. Okay, do you have any concerns? No, mm, he's, you know, he's not his usual self. I, I, I don't really want to talk about it. And it could just all be re related to the medications and we'll see you in a couple weeks, okay? Michael seems okay on his physical exam, but he seemed a bit uh, not himself today. We're gonna ask me questions on how I was feeling and stuff, but I I don't really want to talk about that with like medical doctors and stuff. It's more like psychiatrists. He seemed fine generally. You know, his physical exam was fine, his blood pressure was fine, but uh, I don't know. He seemed a little bit down actually. I'm kind of depressed and stuff, but I'll just keep that to myself and handle that on my own. It would have really been uh, nice if Michael had let his guard drop down and uh, spoke to the doctor uh, um, on a more personal basis and instead of being maybe intimidated by their position or whatever. And I don't even really think they care about how I feel. It's just, it's not really their job. To express his feelings and get some help with what he's dealing with today. And, you know, it's kind of uncomfortable to talk about that around my parents, too. So, yeah, I kind of kept that to myself. So I'm here for another appointment. Michael's about to come to clinic, come back to clinic today, so we'll see how things go. I've been really lethargic and I haven't really been able to keep up with my friends and stuff, so, yeah. I'm Deirdre, I'm one of the child life specialists that works here at the hospital, and uh, from time to time I see Michael when he comes in for his inpatient stays. Today I'm covering the um, outpatient clinic. And this time I'm going to see if I can get somebody to talk to, maybe if I can get my dad to leave the room. It's kind of uncomfortable while he's there. Michael, I didn't know you were in clinic today. Hey. What's going on? Nothing. Nothing? You know, we're done here. We've got height and weight, or blood work's waiting, and uh, the doctor will be about 10 or 15 minutes. Want to go sit in the room? Sure. Hey, Dad, can you go grab me a drink or something? I'm pretty thirsty. Sure. I'll grab it. I'll be back in a bit. Thanks. I think we're just in the clinic room right over here. So, how have you been lately? Uh, kind of depressed, I guess. Yeah? What do you think's going on? I don't know. Have you talked to your team about it? Have you talked to the doctor or the nurse? Not really. I don't really know who right. I can talk to. Yeah. Well, I'm here if you need me. Okay. And there's a social worker. You can talk to your doctor. You can talk to your nurse. The doctor okay. should be in in a couple minutes. All right. Do you think you feel comfortable chatting about it? Sort of, I guess. Sort of, yes. Okay. Well, after you guys have a chat, just let me know if there's anything you didn't get a chance to say, okay? Oh, okay. Thanks. Michael, how um, are you? Good. So, you know, your blood work, everything's really good. You're going to be ready to, uh, to get your next uh, cycle of treatment. But, um, you know, remember last time you were here, your dad was saying you kind of were being quiet at home and not your usual self. Are you still feeling that way? Yeah, I'm kind of feeling weak. I can't really keep up with my friends or anything. Why do you think, what's up? Why do you think that's happening? I don't know. You know, it's really, it's really hard to go through cancer treatment um, and I just want to let you know that there are possibly some things that are related to chemotherapy and we always ask you about them, but then there's this whole other side regarding your emotions and the way you're feeling and the way you're coping with everything and it is actually our job to talk to you about that also, okay? So I want you to feel really comfortable in actually ta um, explaining all of that that aspect, the emotional aspect of your treatment as well. I don't know, I'm kind of depressed and I, I don't really know how to explain it. Mm. You know, not my normal self. Um, sometimes there are things that you may want to say to me that you don't necessarily want me to tell your parents about and that's okay too, with some exceptions. But 
Um, so I just want to encourage you to be really open, okay? Okay. Okay. It's very unusual that Michael's dad is not in for the appointment with him. So I'm a little apprehensive about not being in there when he's uh, talking with the people because, uh, you know, throughout the whole process, his mother and I have been there for every appointment. Um, but uh, he's getting older and uh, he may need to sort some things out on his own. And uh, as long as he's taking advantage of the resources that are available for him, I'm, I'm happy that uh, he's getting the help he needs. It's important um, for teenagers who are going through cancer treatment to be able to actually discuss not only their physical complaints but also their emotional um, feelings and thoughts just because the whole experience is potentially very isolating and scary. As well, there's often times when teenagers want to be able to speak about things that they don't feel comfortable uh, talking to their parents about and so the various aspects of the medical team need to make sure that teenagers feel comfortable um, in expressing their feelings in a, very, in a confidential way which will be helpful but not necessarily um, revealing to the rest of their family if they don't want them to be. So it's good to know that these things are confidential between me and my doctor but I'll probably tell my parents just so they know what's going on too. It's important that uh, Michael knows how to manage himself through the healthcare system and it's also important that he knows he has the right to uh, express his concerns and get the help he needs. Mm -hmm.